Hello everyone and welcome back to the Old Machine Factories Garage series. In today's episode we're gonna take a look at the uh, Jaguar V8 turbo exhaust manifold that I have created. And uh, just a disclaimer that we're gonna cut this uh, exhaust manifold topic into two episodes because there's so many things to, to discuss that I want to keep this. Uh, introduction separate and then we can take a look at the simulation results a bit later on because I there's a lot of things that I can show and the second disclaimer if you have listened this far I know that people are gonna hate me for my wealth <laughs> at least some of you and that's okay but if you can listen for a minute I will tell you tell you the basic reasoning behind this so uh, I've done this exhaust manifold from, you know, uh, water pipes, so it's it's basically mild steel. And uh, I haven't used the root gas in, in the weldings. So what I did is that I tried to preserve the flow side as well as I can, so that I don't uh, get any debris inside the, the uh, pipes. And if we take now a look, I haven't cleaned this up at all so even though the welds look like this they are basically uh, very well penetrated you can see that it's pushing already through from all of the all of the areas but it hasn't uh, caused any additional debris inside the uh, the pipes which happens when you weld it through so I'm sorry for the looks, but uh, I don't really care about them. I just want the welds to be, you know, rigid structurally, and then I don't want to use too much time and money for the excess manifold because I want to drive this car. It's a show car, and then uh, the idea is that I'm just testing out things with this, and probably gonna make a, another excess manifold in 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 uh, some phase. So. So I don't care if it breaks at some point. But <clears throat> for with the M50 Turbo Scorpio, I have driven 13 years and over 100,000 kilometers with the same exhaust manifold, with the same manufacturing design. So just don't wrap it uh, in, in, in heat wrap, because if, if, if the material temp goes up due to the insulation on the outside, it will just vanish, basically. So. I'm not going to wrap this up. That's it for the disclaimers. And then to the actual, uh, let's say, structure or the concept of the exhaust manifold. So I've built now it so that the banks are separate. Uh, it's not a log type manifold, as you can see. Uh, it's like a semi, uh, semi pulse matched. Uh, exhaust manifold because the banks are uh, divided so that they should have the biggest possible delay between the firing uh, firing cylinders so that the pulses would uh, would mix as little as possible with with the firing order without doing any cross pipes between the uh, between the banks so if I would like the op like to build the optimal one, I would probably do the 8 to 1 collector type of a exhaust manifold, or then I would run the cross pipe so that the pulsing would be totally even. But, you know, building that into that engine bay and all the heat that comes out of that and everything, just it's way too complex. I think even this is way too complex. But, but I still decided to do it, and the main reason is that uh, I'm not a big fan of the cross-plane V8 sound, especially with the log type of manifolds. So what I tried to do is that I tried to uh, create an exhaust manifold which would sound better, let's see if that works, and would not compromise the, the uh, basic performance too much so 
Uh, as I have already chosen to drive with one turbo, that's gonna be a problem in, in every layout because uh, if I would like a really responsive, you know, setup, you know, uh, OEM responsive type of setup, I would really like to run two turbos on each side or one side. So one here and one there. And then the uh, exhaust manifolds would have a really small di uh, uh, displacement. The volume would be really small and then short pipes with very good di directing uh, primaries into single collector and then a small turbo with much more uh, responsiveness compared to this one with the large inertia. So, so that would be the you know ultimate uh, setup for 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 the responsiveness. But as we have chosen this due to space limitations and due to the simplicity, otherwise, so less fuel uh, oil lines, less uh, charge pipes, less air intake things, and everything. So, so we're gonna go with this one, but to get it, you know, working quite okay, uh, I tried to play around with the ideas in the simulation table. So, where we need to have the collectors, how long primaries before that, what about the location for the second collector, what would be the length of of the uh, last collector pipe? So which uh, inserts then the turbine housing one side of that. What would be the the total length and, and the diameter? What would be the total volume that we should use here? Because the fact is that it's so long already with these dimensions that we can hit the resonance peaks on the gas, gas exchange side. And um, what I did now is that I tuned basically as well with, as we could with the space claim this exhaust manifold to basically uh, peak torque or uh, close to the uh, turbocharger's pull up area. So I want to help the big turbocharger as much as I can with this setup with these dimensions. And that was the reason for, for this. Uh, and uh, of course, of course, the sound thing. But but I have considered these these topics. And regarding the pulsing, we will also keep the <coughs> pulses separate uh, from each bank up to the waste gate. So we have a middle wall here. And uh, I have done this. Probably have already seen some some uh, backflow testing with the air compressor. So what I did was that I blow, blew some air there with a really small straw, which is not representing of those, of course, the total uh, flow in the in the uh, port or in the primary. It's not a perfect match for for the velocity profile or for the uh, <coughs> mass flows or or volume flows. So so it's not a you know real real test, but it gives you an idea if your collectors work. So if there is a problem with the collector, it will blow back to some of the cylinders, and that will give you an indication where where you have a problem. And to be totally honest with you guys, I had a problem. So. When you are simulating in the system world, uh, you don't have always the, uh, or at, in the first place, you don't have the total 3D representation of these like complex geometries. And I ran into a problem where actually we had backflow from these two cylinders to these cylinders. So if you have studied flow things, for example, here, when we have enough flow and uh, the the uh, flow has some inertia, it will jump over over this opening when this shape is correct and then continue here. 
and uh, it will pull out from this cylinder when this fires and uh, and so on so it's important to get these collectors uh, correct and what happened in my case was that the two first cylinders firing in this pipe they they were back flowing into this pipe and the reason was this so this is a really narrow spot in the in the engine bay we have a chassis beam here starter there gearbox here downpipe coming down, down from here and you know this is a really really tight space the, the subframe is here actually very close to, to the flange and what happened is that I, I reserved too much space in the width direction so as you can see now basically I have the full uh, bend profile here until they merge these two pipes and in this one probably you, you can already guess the problem was that I thought that I had that uh, that we had the guiding edge from from this pipe but what happened from this side it looks quite okay but if I would imagine myself as a gas molecule flying through the pipe and then I would come here I would see a T-joint so basically part of the flow was hitting there to that wall which is basically a T-joint and then it pulled upwards so this part of this flow stopped here and then went back to this pipe to back to these so even though the uh, test isn't you know 100% realistic we found this problem and I can show you even even the parts of the flow testing where we we see the problem but I just wanted to be totally honest that not everything always works out with the first try <laughs> but usually with the second try they 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 work because then I have had just missed missed the thing here and I had uh, assumed too much so that was the problem okay but uh, for the simulation topics uh, we we have over 100 different type of simulation results from different type of setups and remember those all of those variants I have also tuned the engine <laughs> tuned the engine uh, control system so that the, the uh, tune for, for that uh, exhaust manifold setup should be quite close to same so we can actually make real uh, you know uh, <clears throat> real assumptions from the results so so we can really really understand what's going on so that's why I want to keep those separate from from this video it's it's a jungle of, of things and it might be too too much to handle in the same video but that's basically the uh, practical side of the thing so this now fits into the car and I will next throw it into the car and then show you how how it fills up the the engine bay and how well we could keep all the distances from the hot components to the to the ones that are sensitive to the heat so I think this is a fairly fairly good setup and and uh, we need to add some flexible joints not to not to have thermal expansion problems as the, as the lines are quite long and then we need to create a support for for the turbo as well but those are those are things that we we consider when we have everything else now uh, fixed and and working okay let's throw it in the car and see how it looks okay I managed to stuff the <laughs> exhaust manifolds back into the engine bay and as you can see we are missing some auxiliary components some accessory components because I need to run or make the design and build the lines for for the oil cooler we will run a XKR external oil thermostat and the external uh, aftermarket oil cooler so I need to build the lines for that and then I need to create some uh, power steering lines and then 
coolant lines. So that's that's why we are missing the power steering pump from here, then the AC compressor from here, and then the alternator from this side. So I need to create also some wiring stuff. But as you can see, the space claim is quite tight. So there we have the main chassis beam, the subframe, the engine mount, starter, then uh, the valve cover, and the strut tower and then we will have here also the, the alternator like I said and then we need it to go around the XJ or oil filter we have quite a tight space also between the wastegate pipes and the collector pipes and the, the main chassis beam so I tried to build everything so that we have as much space for for the heat sensitive components as we can and here you can see the space for the downpipe and that's actually the place for for the problematic collector so it doesn't look too bad from here but when we go down here <coughs> you can see that we have the main chassis beam there subframe there gearbox there, starter back there, <laughs> then we will have the downpipe coming down from here. So it wasn't a too nice place to, to fit this pipe. But uh, now we, we managed to do it and we are now running the uh, collector pipe back with the same routing that the Subaru original exhaust line has gone through. So we will have there also clearance for, for this uh, sway bar, it's just not having, we don't have all the parts connected, so that's why it's hanging so low, but we have clearance for, for everything basically now. And then on this side, you can see that uh, we have quite a nice space here, but as I said, this will be filled up with the auxiliary components so I took all the space that I could to leave them some airspace there and if we take a look at the <coughs> reasoning for the engine position in the longitudinal direction the reason is here so, so I can barely fit my hand here so that's the steering shaft or column now if i would have wanted to move the engine backwards i would have had to move it a lot backwards to fit this between the last and the second last primary or create some kind of a custom setup here so that's the reason one of the main reasons i i left the engine as it is now and there you can see the, the uh, exhaust collector, problematic collector that I had, that I needed to fix. And these lines will be taken out, so these are for the original steering, uh, power steering pump. But as we have all the connections, needed connections here, and now the Jaguar has the power steering pump on this side, we will run all the oil lines on this side only so those will be taken out so that's not gonna be a problem either <clears throat> and then i also created the charge pipe side so actually one thing that i want to mention as well is that i found these xkr original heat shields which are integrated to the exhaust manifold gaskets so these will fit between the exhaust manifold and valve cover so i will i will probably use these as some kind of a template for creating something fancy but for, uh, in the first place we need to get get things working so i will use those and then if we uh, go to the charger side you can see that i had to modify the xkr charger coolers there's an adapter for, for hose now 
and uh, I pulled out the other cooler so you can see the setup so we have now two two and a half inch pipes which merge into a three inch pipe then we have a, a elbow from the uh, Jaguar XKR 2007 model that fits to the or has been integrated to the uh, supercharger original M112 supercharger and then we have here the original 2007 XKR throttle flap which is uh, electronic version and that has been underwater so I have a separate video where I, I'm fixing that but uh, it now works and uh, while I was fixing it I noticed that it's the same unit than uh, Ford and Volvo uses so uh, it's easy to source and, and it's a cheap cheap uh, piece even though it's used in the XKR so that's why I wanted to leave that back there and if you take a look at the space claim it's quite tight I already created some kind of uh, mock-up for a bracket for, for the throttle body but everything fits and nothing hits anything so that's nice and a couple funny things so this is the original brake booster line from the Subaru I haven't modified it I just turned it a bit and now it fits into the Jaguar XKR <laughs> L intake elbow so I, I can use this because it's after the flap and so on so we can get the vacuum there so I guess this was meant to be and another hint for that topic is also the original uh, Subaru fuel line which I haven't cut in any any uh, form so it's the original line that fits now into the Jaguar <laughs> fuel rail so I'm not gonna use this but just as a funny funny thing and uh, 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 hint that maybe this was meant to be it, I, I thought that was quite a quite a nice coincidence okay and then let's take a look at the charger turbo side so uh, here what I did is that I created this uh, quite tight bend here and I made this service uh, piece here so I can take this out and service the plugs and and the coils and then I can even take out the valve covers so that's really nice if if I want to do some uh, timing timing thing so I need to check clearances or anything I can do it without taking out the turbocharger so so it's uh, meant to be serviced and as you can see I have here also the uh, ignition coil covers from the XKR I think these give quite a nice sleek look for the engine and uh, we already have here some new coils which I will show you in a later episode when, when we take a look at the wiring but we have already coils from another engine in there and that's that's really nice we can hide them there and give like a nice clean look for, for the engine bay so that's quite nice and then uh, just uh, some space claim things so we cannot fit any boost line from here any not, not this is this the bonnet comes down so steeply that we don't have any space basically here so that's why I needed to run a two and a half inch pipe here I will show you in a minute it's it's very close to the bonnet and then we have an adapter to a three inch pipe and then to the actual throttle body so quite a simple simple setup and regarding the dump valve I don't have it yet but uh, I have a place place for it here and as you see that there's a connector there that won't be used I will use a banjo line to re use run a return line on the fuel line so that don't don't worry about that space claim issue it's not gonna be a problem so let's then see how it fits in the in the 
underneath the bonnet so just a moment let's put that there and that there now if we close the bonnet closes nicely and then we go here uh, it's quite a tight space so maybe if I go here I can show you that I cannot even fit my finger there <laughs> so this is a really tight package the the bonnet is so steep in the front end so it just barely misses the, the charge air coolers and then comes down very very steeply so so uh, there was quite a lot of thinking with this one but now it works so I think that's that's quite nice and uh, that's it for today please like and subscribe let me know if you have any ideas comments you know thoughts about the build uh, I'm, I'm glad to discuss this with someone <laughs> I'm, I'm spending so much time in the garage so it's uh, nice to chat with someone even in the even if it's in the internet it's it's better than not chatting with anyone and I hope that you can see that things are really moving forward this package is coming real and uh, what I really like is that uh, the thoughts that I have had and the thinking behind this whole whole setup is now starting to reveal itself so we don't have any issues uh, currently so things fit and you know uh, we have space claims for for all of the parts so i believe that uh, we don't have any show stoppers in this phase either so full steam ahead and uh, i would like to Thank you for your time and hope to see you in the next one.